Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a pure substance property pro uh, problem, a very introductory problem to pure substances in which we have a container with water. And we just want to figure out some properties of this container with the information that we're given. So the problem statement reads, a 1.8 meters cubed rigid tank contains steam at 220 degrees Celsius. Whenever you see this, highlight it's a rigid tank because that's already important information. If it's a rigid tank, that is saying that the volume of this tank is not going to change regardless of what's going on, right? So no matter how much energy you put into that guy, no matter how much pressure builds up in that tank, the 1.8 meters cubed will be kept, right? So that is important information. We uh, One third of the volume is in the liquid phase and the rest is in the vapor form. Determine the pressure of the steam, the quality of the saturated mixture, and the density of the mixture. So, if we have one third of the volume in the liquid phase and the rest in the vapor form, so let's just split this into um, split this into three, okay? And then say this middle part here is vapor. So if we if the problem is stating that we have a, a part of the liquid part of the, the volume is liquid phase and the other part is vapor, it's saying right quite clearly that we have a mixture. Right? So therefore we have a saturated mixture, which, which is pretty much, that's pretty much the definition right, of a saturated mixture. It's a mixture that has both phases, both the vapor and the liquid phase. So that tells us that we can find out what is the pressure, which is part A of the problem, in our pressure tables. We just need to look at a, the 220 degrees Celsius um, property, and then look what is the saturated pressure for that guy, and we're going to get the pressure of the steam for this problem. That's very straightforward. Then the quality of the saturated mixture, what is that? Well, the quality, the quality is how much vapor, how much vapor, we use X for quality generally. The quality is how much vapor in mass I have in respect to the total mass of the system. Right? So that's the that's the quality. So in other words, if I have uh, 10 kilograms of vapor and 100 kilograms of the total mixture, that means that my quality is 10%. Right? So it's the mass of vapor or if it's if it's not water if it's a gas it's going to be the mass of the um, of the gas phase divided by the mass of the total mixture okay so we're going to have to find out some properties to be able to figure out what is going on here to be able to find out the quality and then see what's the density of the mixture density of the mixture so the density I'm going to go and call it row and density we know density is just the mass divided by the volume right well we know the volume it's 1.8 we know that from the start you obviously knew that. So it's just a matter of finding what's the mass total. And you can see that we're going to have to find the mass total to be solved, solve B anyhow. So once we do, all we do is we go ahead and plug in the divide by the volume. Yet another way to think of this is because it's a mixture, I know the, the density, right, is going to be a mixture as well. It's going to be a mixture of what? Well, whatever um, the density of the vapor form is and whatever the density of the liquid form is. However, if I just sum up these two, I'm not accounting for how much I have of each, right? So what I do is I can multiply by the quality, right? Remember that the quality is precisely how much vapor I have in the mixture from here, right? And over here, I can multiply this by 1 minus the quality because whatever is not vapor is going to be liquid. So therefore, this is going to be a ratio of how much liquid I have. So there's those ways to solve it. All right, so let's start with the basics. We have steam, we have a mixture, so I'm going to go into a saturated water table. I'm looking at the temperature table because that's what I've been given. I've been giving the 220 degrees Celsius for this guy. Always give preference to the table, to the temperature table if you have both temperature and pressure. If you only have pressure, go to the pressure table, obviously, but if you have the option, always go to the temperature table. And we're going to go down all the way until we find 220, which is right here. Okay, so if it's a saturated, if it's saturated, and we know it's saturated mixture because we have both phases, then that means that all these properties here apply. Okay, and that's the beauty of thermodynamics, right? That's precisely the idea of thermodynamics is that um, if, if you're able to pinpoint the state in which your substance is in, you know all these properties for that substance. Okay, so I already know that the pressure of that mixture is 2319.6 kilopascals. Right? Why do I know that? Well, just to remind you, in case you forgot, the way it works, let me go ahead and do a 
a simple graph here. Let's put the temperature up here. Let's put the volume over here. Or even better, let's put the specific volume, right? Which is volume divided by the mass. The way it works is that as you give, if I'm giving energy to a system, we're going to expect the temperature to increase and the volume to increase. In the case of pure water, the temperature is going to increase all the way to 100, right? Pure water at one atmosphere, the temperature and the volume are going to increase all the way into 100. Once it hits that 100, what's going to happen? Well, even if I give more energy to my system, my temperature is not going to change because now my liquid water is going to be converted into steam, right? To vapor. And that happens all at the same temperature, right? Through latent heat. And then it's going to keep expanding. You know that my volume is increasing, yet my temperature is staying the same. It's going to be expanding all the way until all my liquid has been converted into steam. And then I start to expand again. Right. And if I do that, you know, for different pressures, I'm going to get different points here. I'm going to have the same behavior, similar behavior, going like so. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get a different point in which it starts to happen. And I'm going to have like so. And if I plot all these points, if I plot all these points in which things start to happen, they stop happening, I'm going to get a configuration like so. This is the dome that we call. We have the critical point over here. And then everything, let me just get rid of these. Everything that is in this region here is what we call subcooled liquid or a compressed fluid. Everything inside this region is going to be the saturated mixture, right? So the mixture between liquid and vapor. And everything in this right-hand side region is going to be what we call a superheated fluid, right? So I know from the get-go that I am somewhere here in the middle. I'm not sure where, but I know I'm somewhere in the middle. Why? Because I know I have a mixture of vapor and liquid, right? As a matter of fact, I know I have one third volume liquid and two thirds vapor. So, you know, this would be half and half. If I divide this into three, I'm kind of here, right? So I have more vapor, oops, more vapor, which is over here, than liquid, which is over here. So I know I'm kind of there in the in this drawing. Where exactly? Can't be sure, right? We need to calculate to be sure. All right, and I know the pressure of this guy here is 20, uh, what did you find? 2319.6. Kilopascals, right? We know the pressure and the temperature are going to stay the same as this is going through the change of phase from liquid to vapor. So that's going to be my answer for part A. Quite straightforward. Just grab it off the table. Um, part B, what is the quality of this saturated mixture? So how much exactly in mass, although this is in mass, not in volume, how much exactly do I have vapor-wise and how much do I have um, liquid-wise? So let's start by noting that we have we know the 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 volume the total volume and if you go down to our property table again you know that we know the specific volume for the fluid that's f for fluid there and the specific volume for the vapor that's for gas i guess right so if everything if this were not a mixture and as instead was only vapor right then we know this would be the specific volume if instead this would, was not a mixture but only liquid, this would be the specific volume. But if we have a mixture, so that means that we're going to be somewhere in between these two numbers here, right? We're going to be somewhere in between because we have a bit of both. Um, how do we find out out? Well, if we know how much we have of each, we know the total one, we can find out, and we know that's two-thirds of the volume is one, two-thirds of the volume is the other one, we can find what is the, um, the quality of the system, right? What's going to be the the, to, the 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 mass the volume of the steam? It's going to be two thirds of the 1.8. What's going to be the volume of the liquid? It's going to be one third of the 2.8. So therefore, I can relate these into these guys here and then find out what's the mass. Let's do it in one step at a time. Okay. So, what is my the volume? Volume, not specific volume of liquid. Well, it's going to be one third of total volume, right? So that's going to be one third of 1.8. Meters cubed, and that's just 0.6 meters cubed, right? Likewise, total volume of the vapor will just be two thirds of the total volume, right? So literally 1.2, 1.2 meters cubed. Beautiful. Now, how much mass does 0.6 meters cubed of liquid represent? Well, that's easy because I have saturated liquid, so I have the specific volume for the saturated liquid which is the volume for the saturated liquid divided by the mass, right? And that is exactly what do we have here, 0 0.00119. Okay, and that's meters cubed per kilogram. 
and that has to be equal to the volume of liquid, which we know to be 0.6 meters cubed, divided by the mass of liquid that we have inside the system. So the only unknown here is the mass of liquid, right? Which I get by getting this guy and dividing by this guy. That's all, right? So the mass of liquid, the mass of liquid I have in this system is 504.2 kilograms. Yeah, and it's kilograms because obviously I'm getting rid of this and I'm left with the kilogram there. And then for the steam, we can do exactly the same thing, right? So if my specific volume for the steam or steam is just the volume of the steam divided by the mass of the steam, and therefore if I'm looking for the mass of the steam that I have, all I'm going to do is take the volume of steam and divide by specific volume of steam. I happen to know all that because this is 1.2 meters cubed, and this is, let's go to the table, 0 0.086. 0 0.086. 094. That's meters cubed per kilograms. And this turns out to be 13.94. Okay, so we have way more liquid than we have vapor. Okay, the, the volume is completely, it gets you completely off track because obviously the gas occupies a way bigger volume than the liquid. So now if we want to find a quality, and remember that part B asks us for the quality, right? What is the quality? Well, the quality, like we talked about, is just the mass of vapor in respect to the total mass. And that's quite easy for us to calculate now because it's so, the mass of vapor, we know it's 13.94 kilograms, and the total mass is going to be the 13.94 plus the 504.2. Note we have kilograms everywhere, so kilograms go away. We're just left with the ratio, and we get that to be 2.7. percent. Okay, so 2.7 percent is the quality of this mixture. And then if you recall, you remember that I'm going to, I'll say that we were over here, so I misspoke, right? I'm not over here. In reality, I am very, very close to the saturated liquid line. Only a bit of this mixture actually converted into vapor, right? So I was thrown off by the split in the volume, but in reality, we're way closer here. We have way more liquid than we have vapor. Right? As a matter of fact, if you split this into 100 equal bits, this is going to be the, the, the third split, right? The 3% there. Cool. So we have part B, and that will be our answer for part B. What's the quality of this mixture? All right. And for the last part, which is the density, what we need to do now is calculate the density. And we know the density is kilograms per meters cubed, right? So mass over volume. Mass over volume. And you'll note that density is exactly the inverse of specific volume, right? Because the specific volume is just uh, meters cubed per kilogram volume over mass. So we can say the density is just inverse of specific volume. So what we can do is we can calculate the, the specific volume for this mixture, specific volume for the mixture, and then invert that to find the density for the mixture. And the specific volume for the mixture is just going to be the specific volume for the vapor times the amount of vapor that I have, which is my quality, plus the specific volume for the liquid times whatever is not vapor, right? So that is 1 minus my quality, or 100% minus my quality in percentage, right? And then if I do that, I'm going to get the value for the mixture, and if I wanted to find the density for the mixture, all I need to do is take this value that I find and invert it, and I'm going to get my uh, density, right? So in other words, what I'm trying to do here is the one for the vapor, which is the one for the vapor, where was it? Over here. This is the one for the liquid, so let me grab the one for the liquid. Uh, 0.009119 times 1 minus 2.7%. Or even if we want to do it better, let's do 100 minus 2.7%. And then this is in percentage here. Plus the one for the vapor, which is 0 0.06. 86094. We're multiplying that by 4. Multiplying that by 2.7%. We're setting up these two guys here. Um, this gave me 
0 0.03 so this gives me 0 0.0038 Two, four, and then it keeps going. And this is meters cubed per kilogram. So, therefore, if I want to find the density, I'm just going to do the mix inverted. And if I invert that, I get 287.15. So, 0 0.2 is good enough for us. And that's going to be obviously the inverse of the units, too. And this guy right here is the answer for. Part C. So again, this is a supposed to be a simple problem and you know introductory problem for pure sub substance properties. How to look up things on the property table. Note that once we had the temperature and we knew the split between the volumes of the vapor and the liquid, we knew all these guys here. We knew internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, specific volume. We could grab all those properties for this mixture. That's the beauty of thermodynamics. As per usual, if this helps you out, consider liking the video. If you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section, and we'll talk soon.